this symposium for IT providers. In preparation, please turn on your camera, ensure your microphone is muted to maintain audio quality and introduce yourself using the chat. Let us know your name, where you come from and what your role is, please. Kotalia toku ingua he tohu tohu aho. I'm an advisor in Tiohu Paerewa Unga Kayako teacher quality team. A reminder that the notes that you create during the breakout sessions will be collated and sent to you along with the slides and a recording. And all of that will also be packaged and published on the Teaching Council website. So you can go back and retrieve it anytime you like. Tēnā koutou. Over to you, Tāmoho. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa. Tēnei te mi i atu. Uh, kia koutou. Uh, tēnei wā e tata ana. Kia hana koko ka eke mai i runga no i tōna hekenga. Uh, Oia no mere kire miti kia koutou katoa. Ko wai tēnei e kōrero nei. Ko wai tēnei e mi i nei. Ko rua peu. Ko tongariro. Ko taranaki. Ko te kaha hui maunga. Uh, ngā uh, tēnei e mi i nei. Uh, ko te awa ko wanga nui. Ko te rangi tīkei. Ko te wai tōtara. Ko te wanga iu. Ko ngā iwi, uh, ko te ati aunui a pāparangi, ko ngā tiapa ngā wairiki, uh, ko ngā rauru, ko ngā timaru, uh, ko taranaki wānui tēnei uh, e mi i nei. Uh, ko tamahau, rau toku ingoa, uh, ko au te paukai āwha o te matatū ao te aroa. I'd just like to take this opportunity to say uh, that... Uh, my role here um, at Matatu Aotearoa is te pou kai āwha o te matatū. And when we look at our whare o te matatū, the pou kai āwha has a role of weathering the storm. I'm not quite sure whether I have an umbrella every time I have to speak to weather the storm, but what I do have is the role of taking care of things for te ao Māori, uh, guide and assist and support our Pacifica um, strategy. Um, I'm also an HR, lead of HR and teacher quality and pathways, uh, connecting to and engaging with our key stakeholders. Um, I would first like to mention for a um, quickly finish and hand over to this awesome team to deliver this is a big thank you. I know that um, it's been a very big year for all you um, doing your mahi out there in our communities. And what I really want to say is that we at Matatu Aotearoa appreciate you. Uh, and we are very thankful for what you provide um, to our communities, uh, but more so to our future. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, I am privileged uh, to now be able to work with this team um, and we're a new team um, going forward and I look forward to meeting up with you as we get around to say hello over many cups of teas, coffees, lattes uh, and um, I wish you a Merry Christmas and thank you very much. Nā mihi kia koutou katoa. Thank you very much for being here today. It's really good for IT providers to see your face, start to get to know you, and as you say, they'll see more of you next year and years to come on. Um, kia ora everyone. He tohu tohu arhi ki Matatu Aotearoa, lead advisor at the council here. Um, Tamo might have to go uh, to another hui soon, but the rest of the team will carry on uh, for the event. As in previous end of year symposia, the focus of today is to wrap up the year, uh, take a glance into next year and acknowledge um, the, the accomplishments and the achievements. As part of today, we've got um, some significant external guests coming soon and we'll also have a report from council staff and policy team and we'll have a chance for breakout rooms where you can give us some feedback about what we should be doing next year. So I'm going to hand over to Jocelyn, who's going to introduce herself and tell us more about what's happening next. 
Kia ora, uh, ko Jocelyn Pollock, toko ingoa, he toho toho mātua mō te matatua te roa. I am one of the senior advisors at uh, the Teaching Council and I work in the competence and the ITE space and some of you I've met before so it's, it's good to um, continue that relationship. You will have, hopefully, you will all have received, had contact from the council um, seeking information about programs for 2024. This information has been driven by recent collaboration between the ITE providers and the Ministry of Education and the council. And the idea is that, um, and it has ended up with being a ITE program finder tool for potential candidates to find um, ITE programs that best suit their uh, situation and their needs. The council has deeply appreciated, oh, and Tali's just popped the link up for that in the, in the chat if you haven't already um, had access to it. The council has deeply appreciated sharing this work with the Ministry of Education. And today, Today, we've invited uh, Rachel Clements and Rosa Main from the Ministry Workforce Supply and Leadership Team to discuss their work increasing the visibility of ITE pathways. Rachel is the Chief Advisor for that team, and she is supported by Rosa in her role of advisor. So welcome, um, Rachel and Rosa, handing over to you. Kia ora, thank you. Jocelyn, for those very kind words, um, we've been delighted to be able to collaborate with the Teaching, Co Teaching Council on this work and they've been an, a really essential partner to what we're doing here. So um, just in advance, I want to thank them for their patience with all the phenomenal questions and everything that <laughs> we've asked of them over the last few months. Um, just introducing myself, Bo Ko Rachel Aho, Ko Clements Toko Ingwa, No Aotearoa Aho. Ke Karahana Bay in Noho Anna, Ke Titahu, Mataranga, Aho in Mahi Ano. Um, really delighted to come along today. Um, as um, Jocelyn mentioned, we've got um, Rosa here. Um, to my other side, who you can't see at the moment, I've got Kim Whitaker, who's the manager of our engagement and team. Um, from <laughs> um, so, what we'd really like to do today is do a couple of things. One, I'll introduce our team. Um, we've had a few changes here at the ministry that you may or may not be aware of. Um, so I'll introduce our team and what we're doing. And I'd like to um, talk a little bit more about the, the project um, around demystifying IT pathways, um, which some of you have um, been involved with. So again, thanks in advance for everyone, um, all the IT providers who have had um, supported this. And then um, Kim will talk a little bit about our Become a Teacher campaign, which um, launched in the last um, week or 10 days. So we'll go from there. Thanks, Rosa. So our team. Um, back in April, the Ministry um, introduced a significant change. And our team used to be Teacher Supply. We're now called Education Workforce, Education Workforce Supply and Leadership. So a bit more of a mouthful. Um, in saying that, while our remits increase to the wider education workforce, um, the majority of our work is still focused around teacher supply. As we all know, we've still got quite a supply problem out there in, um, in most areas, but in particular across secondary um, and shortage subject areas, such as Tereo and STEM subjects, and also particular locations and other areas. So our team is really committed to growing and attracting and retaining a highly qualified and diverse education workforce that meets the needs of our community. And in doing that, we all know how essential ITE is to this. And we know that there's a lot of challenges with um, enrolments around ITE, and that is creating a lot of concern across the ministry, and I know um, amongst the providers as well. So I just want to um, reflect that we hear that and we're doing, um, doing some great work to actually try and work out how we can address that issue. Um, as I said earlier, we're focusing on a couple of things today. Um, that doesn't take away from the wider work um, across the ministry, looking at other more strategic policy initiatives around considering practicums and other, other areas and system levers. So um, just know, just be reassured what we're talking about today isn't the only thing that the ministry is doing. Um, within our team, we have uh, a number of things that are related to the ITE um, initiatives. So we have campaigns um, that 
Kim is going to be talking about. We do a lot of work around communications to encourage people to become a teacher and enter the workforce. Um, we do know that um, there are challenges around the perception of teaching and that hasn't been helped by the uh, teacher strikes and other things that happened this year. Um, and we are very aware of that and the need to improve the perception of teaching um, and the value proposition. We also run a number of initiatives around supporting um, people into ITE and also once I've um, graduated from ITE into teaching. So there's a number of things around scholarships, which you'll, you'll be aware of. We have the Better Matching Program, which is about matching. Hopefully you're aware of that. We, we match um, recruit um, graduate, recent graduates into um, their first jobs. We have a, no a number of other initiatives that you may or may not be aware of, including isolated practicums, the three RNF fund. Um, a lot of these are quite outdated. Um, and so there's work around looking at the different initiatives that are currently there to understand are they fit for purpose? Are they actually meeting the needs of the sector? And if not, what do we do about that? Um, you'll also be aware, I'm sure, of the four um, employment-based education programs that we've got. So we've got Aki Makatupu, who um, may be on the line, and we've got the three Māori medium e-bites, which are over to the right there. Um, and we also have the School Onsite Training Program, which was a pilot around with time limited funding around boosting secondary teacher supply. Um, the other thing that we're really keen to do is work on improving data and insights. So I can imagine um, from an IT provider perspective, but also from the ministry perspective, having better understanding of who's going into teacher, um, into ITE and what happens when they come out the other side um, will be very, very helpful. So our new data and insights team is exploring around what's possible. So I'm excited about that and um, yeah, I'm watching that space. Okay, so what I'll talk about now is the work we're doing around increasing the visibility of ITE pathways. So as a bit of background, and I apologise if um, people have heard this before, but a number of months ago we had principals from a, a range of different areas um, come to us saying, look, we're really, really, really keen to support people within our community to become a fully qualified teacher, but we just don't know how to do this. This was, the reason we paid a lot of attention to this is the principals that came to see us were really motivated principals. They're the ones that we've worked with before, they're problem solvers. If they want to find information, they're pretty good at finding information. And so um, we thought, actually, let's, let's, let's figure out what's going on here. Um, when they came and spoke to us, they also came to spoke, speak to us about um, e-bytes. And so as you've heard just before, we see eBytes as employment-based ITE, and they'll say, there's a lot of eBytes out there. Why don't you know about this? And, but when we unpicked that, we found out that they were talking about education-based ITE. So those, as we'll know, um, there's a lot of terminology. It might be field-based, education-based, um, interns, you know, apprentice-based, whatever. There's all school-based. There's a whole heap of terms about what that looked like. So I recognize that within um, our team, there's quite a gap between our knowledge of, we knew a lot more about the campus-based models, because um, I suppose that's what I've grown up with. Um, we knew about the e byte models because we have our pilots in place, but we didn't know as much around the, the different types of provision between that and what it looked like. So, this is when we approached the Teaching Council, who, as I said, were very patient with us, and they helped us um, gain a much better understanding of what the different opportunities were across that landscape. So that was our landscape, and um, that was our challenge, is how can we better understand this, and how can we demystify these IT pathways for those out there in the sector? So what did we do? Um, after speaking with the Teaching Council, um, we decided to go out and speak with a sample of ITE providers. So again, if you're on the call and we spoke with you, thank you. Um, we also um, spoke to a number of principals and deputy principals and student teachers. And all of the schools and student teachers we spoke from to came from a range of different backgrounds, from very small schools um, and isolated all the way through to large and covering both primary and secondary. We were really focusing on schools in this um, in this work, um, but we recognize there is opportunities there with ECE as well. So 
in speaking with these people, um, we received phenomenal insights into the opportunities and barriers around starting to become a student teacher. And um, what you've got here are some of the key themes that were identified. So you've already heard um, us talk about the fact that ITE pathways into ITE are unclear, but also that people aren't aware of the options for ITE study or also don't believe that it's possible within these circumstances. So we heard a lot about people saying, you know, I've got family commitments, I need to work because cost of living is a big thing. Um, I can't move away from my community. I can't go to a campus. Um, and a lot of people felt that those were major issues for them. Um, and it took a long time for them to find out that actually they're not necessarily issues. Um, and as we said earlier, the narrative around teaching is, isn't great at the moment. So here are some quotes about what we heard. Um, and this is, um, the first one is an example of what we heard, which led us to develop this um, IT program finder. So we heard from a lot of people about having information in one place would have been really helpful. It would have made a really big difference to them to be able to find information. Um, we heard from one student teacher, it took um, them three years to find a suitable course. We found from another, it took them 18 months. These are motivated people. We also heard from a number of um, people about the fact that they knew of people who weren't able to find a course, so they just went uh, too, too hard. I'm not going to go into teaching now. Um, and we also heard the same from principals around, actually, you know, there are some great people within our communities. So we talk about LATS, technicians, teacher aides, uh, might be um, parents or whanau, um, et cetera, et cetera but they needed information to be able to understand what are the opportunities because we heard that they were sitting down with people they identified to try and find a suitable course for them. Um, a lot of it was word of mouth, so it might be that you're lucky enough to ask the right person the right question to be able to find something that works for you. Um, and I think the last um, quote is a, is a good one in the sense that this person would have started the ITE program a long time ago if they had the proper information. We're also very aware that you know there's 25 providers and 97 programs out there, which is a lot. If um, you try, I know that um, we've got ECE in primary and secondary, but it's a lot if you're trying to find information about something that will work for you. So this is what led us to um, um, pull together this ITE tool. So as I said, the um, problem was that the ITE pathways weren't clear. And again, it, we were um, people emphasised the need to accommodate their personal circumstances and learning needs. Um, so the solution was the program finder tool, and um, this is where we can um, break things down by the relevant filters. Our focus at the moment is promoting this tool by different channels. So Kim's shortly going to be talking about the Become a Teacher campaign, um, which is why we were in not a rush, but we were trying to pull it together in a very short time frame. So again, thanks to everyone for um, inputting your information so quickly. Really key to this as well is this is an interim tool and our ambition is to develop it further. We see a lot of opportunities with this and now that we'll have more time, so over the next six to 12 months, our ambition is to do some more work with this, um, which is critical. So just going to give a quick example for those of you who haven't seen the tool yet. So if you're looking for an IT program that you could study online in your secondary, select secondary, you put available online and you put your language in and you see a list and you'd scroll down because there are further um, ones down there. You select a course that might work for you. You pop on there and we get the information about that um, program and the contact details and then the click through to the, the relevant website. So we've, when we've tested this and talked this through with um, potential users, they're really excited about it, which is fantastic. And I hope all of you who have been involved in this are able to look at it, try it out, and let us know if there are any, um, any inaccuracies or anything that we could do better. We're really grateful for, for any feedback on that. Okay, I'm going to pass over to Kim, who's going to talk about the campaign. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> um, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, my name is Kim Whitaker. I'm the manager of the um, workforce engagement team. 
Um, so a part of my team is actually building that awareness um, around kind of um, teaching both domestically and overseas. So we run um, two key kind of um, pieces of work in that space. Um, today, I'm just going to talk about the Become a Teacher campaign, which is the domestic one. Um, so we actually launched this last year in 2023. Uh, and the aim at that point was just to build awareness of teaching within the core group of the 18 to 24 year olds. As Rachel's mentioned, as we know, the perception of teaching um, has been impacted over the last 12 months or so because of um, strikes, et cetera. And so really it was about actually bringing it back to basics. So really what does a teacher do? What's the influence that they have on people's lives? And reminding them that we can all really remember what the influence a teacher has. So we actually took this out to um, the ministers of the day and spoke to them and asked them to tell us about the teachers that they remember and they can actually all list off their, their teachers a whole heap of them and we have got um, Chris Hipkins to um, do it as well as um, Minister Dantonetti as well so it was really exciting to get them involved as well. The campaign talked to real students so we went out and asked for students across um, the motto to come and tell us about their stories and tell us about those teachers that had that influence. Um, and so it went out um, for a long period last year, it went across all the campuses, we did some direct comms, we'd worked in partnership with staff to run a, an actual um, a, um, nomination process where people um, were asked to nominate teachers that had helped change their life and, and went out and met that one of those teachers um, and um, to acknowledge what they, the influence they'd had on the, 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 the child, but also actually the parent and the influence that they had on the parents as well. So um, as I say, we've just relaunched this um, a couple of weeks ago. We would have liked to have gone earlier, but um, I'm sure we were aware that um, yeah, we we're unable to do advertising as there's an election going on. So we pushed this out as soon as we could, particularly knowing that they know it was to assist in the IT recruitment um, this side of Christmas. Uh, though it's a really short window, we know that it's we've had more conversations we've been having and we felt that it was beneficial to actually do that. So reusing the concept with the students, et cetera. This has gone out across um, across multiple channels, really targeted though, using um, a lot of digital this time, um, serving it in through people who are actively already looking and thinking about teaching those who are coming to the end of their grad, um, their, their degrees uh, and might be thinking of their next steps as well. Um, and we've actually had a phenomenal response. Um, so our, um, we've already surpassed our targets. Uh, we've got another week and a half to go. Um, we've had 58,000 people come to the new website in that space. And of that, some of them have come back. So actually the returns, it says about visits of over nearly 80,000 visits to the site. So we know that that means that people are engaging into the, the content, they're going there, they're re-going back again and looking again. We're just trying to find then the connection of when they go to that pool and where they go from from there, which is we haven't got that data as yet. But that will allow us to really track that next stage. That's why it's really exciting to have that tool on, on the website. Now, when I talk about the website, I'm not talking about TeachNZ website. Uh, so I'm sure some of you know it's been there for a wee while. It's looking a little bit tired. Um, we are in the process of rebuilding a new website. Um, however, as an interim solution, we have built the um, Become a, or Come Teachers um, page. Um, and we've done some re, re, re kind of ordering of this um, in and for this new launch and so we've tightened up some of the copy that's on there um, and so we've got as you can see on the screen now some really drop nice simple to use drop down um, accordion so it gives people the kind of those key things prompts for them to find the information they will need in that first one where it says choosing the right course there is a link there we will give you the link to this new site as well you know you can see the URL at the top but um you can um, this will let you so then if you do want to actually link to that then please do be super if you could and on there we have got the scholarships as well so we're promoting that and that's actually what will happen in the next round so although we've just had this very short burst this side of christmas in january we launch the next side of the of the scholarships will happen as well so that will link through to this section as well so it's building that re uh, recognition of the campaign and actually a continuation and that's actually um, a really kind of poignant point is that our strategy going forward is not to continually focus on short, sharp bursts. It's actually about always on content. And I'm sure your marketeers um, will be going, thankfully, here, we'll be going in that direction because that ongoing always presence with 
kind of peaks of, in, in, um, of activity is kind of the way we need to be going to ensure that we can continually um, address the perception um, and also keep moving forward. So this is actually one of our campaign um, videos that ran on YouTube, so I'll just let it run. Hopefully you should hear it. Can't hear that, Mark. Uh, Rachel, Rosa. Can't can hear it, can you? We need to share the sound. Have you sound done that? If not, we'll don't worry. We'll we'll share that on to you another time so you can hear that. But basically, it's one of the students talking about. Oh, sorry. Change the slide. There we go. So these are some of the just again some of the images that you can see. We had a really nice mix of people um, who uh, volunteered to be involved. These are all have. Real students across, uh, say, at different universities, um, who would kind of talk about that influence that they had on their lives. Um, so it was really exciting to get them involved as well. Um, and say so this is then used actually in the scholarships campaign. So we've just slightly tweaked it. So at the end, it says um, uh, about the teachers and scholarships. So it brings that recognition. And we actually use it in um, our um, stand and activity uh, for Tomatatini earlier this year as well. Uh, where we took a slightly different tact on that, where we adjusted the, the people to focus on Kaiko talking about what it means to be a Kaiko. Um, so the campaign really has that, that longevity and ability to, to continually support the profession and encourage more people to go into it. Um, being the 21st century, we use Reels in Instagram, we use TikTok, um, and, and these got really good pickups. Um, they really embraced the person you can see in the center of the screen there. She was actually an absolute superstar, and um, she was our did as an extra focus for our stuff piece as well, where they went actually and interviewed her and talked about why she what she wanted to do next. So she wanted she was training to be a teacher, uh, and it was because of the influence that her teacher had, had on her. Um, so she was fantastic, and the idea is actually we might we're going to look to see if we can revisit her. This, uh, in 2024 and see where she's up to now um, and go from there. And actually, um, so, when we talk about the next steps, um, there will be further promotion. Um, as I said, we will be looking to do the peak. So we will look at actually it'll be slightly later actually than April, um, probably uh, real aligning with that um, kind of May, June time. But in the meantime, what we are building at is a continual program of um, positive stories that proactively look position teachers and the uh, education profession um, out there in through the media channels to our own organic channels so we're actually having things going out and on our um, digital channels continually and building up those story bases so um, we're always open to hearing any stories that you may have so if there is anything from your perspective that you think might fit within this kind of group of activity please reach out to me I'm absolutely open to hearing about it thank you Thanks, Kim. Um, and just finishing up, so the work that we're doing um, that resulted in the ITU Pub, um, course program finder tool, sorry, um, is just the first step. So we've got a lot more things that we've learned um, and the insights we've gained from our conversations across the board, and we'll be continuing to have those and looking at opportunities to make improvements and reduce barriers across the board. Um, if you have any thoughts about how we can promote IT pathways to different groups, so we've had some conversations with people around how we can bring, um, for example, LACs into, um, into Become Qualified Teachers and other things, that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, or any other suggestions or ideas, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, or um, we'll welcome anyone to come have a conversation. So um, any questions? Hello, Rachel Bill here. Um, just while people get some questions to give them in their head, maybe you could drop into the chat the preferred email address for contacting you about further ideas. Where should I put my email? Yeah. yeah. Just um, kia ora, Naomi Ingram here from University of Otago. Um, just 
Um, kia ora. I just so that another round in April because unfortunately for us, you say enrollment deadlines for mid December. Our submission dates are actually December the first um, because we need to interview them and things like that before they start. So is it in the May? So a lot of them, we've actually asked our university to hold them open longer because of this advertising campaign, and we're getting some good um, late submissions. So thank you. I mean, it's so important. But for the next one, the April one, is that going to be another kind of boost of similar? So you've got the ongoing thing, but then another boost, because a lot of our students, particularly for the one-year masters, will have missed out on this campaign. Yeah, it will be a boost. Um, and we're yeah. also kind of having conversations um, with yourself and, and the wider um, IT sector as well about kind of that timing to make sure we're getting yeah. it right. Um, uh, but yeah, the idea is to have that continual SOR. We're improving our SEO and that yeah. kind of the search element. But yeah, we're, we're, we're burst at, at times where we know we really need to get yeah. people to do something. Um, yeah. I have I brought in um, three weeks ago uh, a new person to lead all this marketing activity who is really um, skilled in this space so he will be looking to reach out again but it's mm. it's wonderful to hear that you are actually getting mm. some late applicants which yeah. um, it, I can you know that justifies why we thought it was a good thing to do it mm. even though we were late mm -hmm. so thanks for that yeah I'm happy to talk about deadlines yeah thanks yeah well, thanks Wonderful. Um, we pass back over. There's no other questions. Shall we pass back over? Kapai, Yamahinui, Rachel, Rosa, and Kim. And um, if anyone has any questions that they think about, you can always pop those in the chat or email um, Rosa, who at Myers just popped her address in the chat as well. So thank you so much for your mahi with. Um, increasing visibility of IT pathways and with the program finder tool. I know we're really excited about working in collaboration with you on this project and um, about attracting more young people into IT study. And also a big thanks to IT providers for your crucial participation and support of this initiative. Um, I'll put in the chat now an email which went out recently to providers. So this includes information about the program finder tool, including email addresses of who you can contact for if there's either technical faults or for data content. I'll just put this in the chat now. Um, for some reason it's not letting me, but we'll find a way of getting that to you. Okay, so um, we'd also like to share that at least two prominent IT personalities are retiring at the end of this year. So Sally Hansen is retiring as the Director of Professional Education at Massey University after 24 years of responsibility for IT there. And Gwenda Caverne is retiring as the Head of School for the EIT School of Education and Social Science. And we believe this is for after 20 years or more of service. So we'd like to extend a huge congratulations to Sally and Gwenda um, as they finish in their roles and enter retirement. Um, the IT community recognise the contributions and achievements that you've made in those years and to the IT landscape. And we know that you'll feel really proud of the number of graduates who have been through your programmes and are now contributing to the teaching profession. So I'm sure you'll have a great number of things on the horizon for retirement, starting with a break of the Christmas period. So a huge congratulations to you from the Teaching Council and all the best. And we'd also like to extend a big thank you to any other staff who may be moving on from ITE at the end of 2023. There's always people moving on. And although this is not always recognised, we'd like to acknowledge these people. So if you know of anyone moving on, um, we'd like to know as these people are integral to the capacity of ITE. So yamahi nui. So I'd now like to hand over to Libby Tregear, the lead advisor and the policy and implementation team. Kia ora Libby.
Um, is Libby with us today? Okay, I, maybe we'll come back to this one. Um, but what we will have the opportunity for now is for some breakout rooms. So I'd now like to hand over to Simon, my colleague Simon. Kia ora, Simon. Oh, kia ora koutou, uh, ko tangata tariti toko iwi ki papioia toku kaina anaya nei. Uh, ko Simon Koro Takuinua, I'm a Toho Toho Matua Senior Advisor here on the ITE team. Um, we're up to 6th of December, so that probably means your calendars are full for 2024. But um, we, uh, we're we going to sneak in and get some planning underway for our ITE symposia next year. So um, no better way than to get to get you um, together in little groups of five or six in a breakout room. Uh, we want you to think about the um, topics we've covered this year in 2023 and especially the impact um, that they had either in your practice in your organization or on your uh, student teachers uh, and then start unpacking what topics you think the symposia should be covering next year or especially if you know um, speakers and experts that would be in that space so uh, Maya's going to pop us into breakout rooms there will be a link there um, for an online document to um, capture the cordial. Um, so if you could nominate a scribe, get some notes in that um, document, um, and then just be prepared to feedback. We're going to spend um, 20 minutes on this. So we'll go to just after um, 11.20. So we'll go to 11.22. We'll stick to the, the 15 <laughs> minutes and then that uh, we can slot uh, Libby back in if we get hold of her. And um, yes, please, any any ideas that you can think think of and so we can get planning. Thank you, Maya. Yep, everybody's back. Everyone's back, okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, everybody. We hope that was a productive conversation. We saw notes being kept, so that's fantastic. Um, in 10 minutes' time, we will hear from Libby Tregear from the policy team. She's just come in from another meeting, so we'll hear from her soon. But let's do some quick feedback from the groups to find out what they thought really made an impact in 2023 from the symposia and what they're really looking forward to maybe investigating for next year. So let's start with group number five. Who's reporting back for group five, please? Oh, I can. Uh, kia ora, Philip Cosgrove, University of Waikato. Uh, so the main things we talked about in relation to 2023 were uh, the updates about changes with the curriculum were useful, um, unpacking the term readiness to teach and fitness to teach, and that was something that we said we'd quite like to continue, that some of those key terms that are in the teaching council requirements, it'd be great to hear how other people were interpreting them. Um, overall, the sharing was really useful, just hearing what the reality was for other um, people in the sector. And we did find that the timing was sometimes a little bit difficult for us to get to consistently. So we tried to share it out amongst our, our colleagues and make sure that people could get there. Uh, possibilities, do you want me to go on bill for policy? Right. Yes, um, please. The constant updates were great. So keeping them even as a small part of a session so that we could hear what was happening. Um, be really interested to hear how the vision for the key teaching tasks in CIA um, has actually matched with the reality of what's been implemented. Overseas best practice, ideas for going forward, um, and introducing, uh, hearing about key government commitments and the possible responses that the ministry and how the ministry is viewing those. Um, that's what we came up with. Namahi. Okay. Thank you, Group 5. Group four, please, someone from your team. Yeah, cool. Kia ora koutou. My name's Vaishali. Um, so in terms of what was useful, um, the two sessions about the, one was about the expectations of student teachers and the other was around the assessment of um, 
student teachers to support associate teachers, which was held at the end of October. Um, and that just kind of stemmed um, thoughts around helping with the consistency of expectations, because as providers, we seem to be asking for different documents at different times. Um, and there was a personal interest there about building a collaborative approach um, across us as ITE providers and streamlining documentation um, within our capacities of our various providers. Um, and yeah, that would essentially help regional placements uh, where, you know, if you're out of the region, you may not necessarily be a preferred um, provider, but just sort of to help with a bit of a, a collaborative approach there. Um, and next year, the team were, were quite interested in um, extending essentially those two sessions around the placement assessments and then also the associate teacher networks. Um, and there was an interest there around Oh, yeah, expectations of us as ITE providers um, from the Teaching Council um, and bringing the providers, Teaching Council and Ministry together to sort of iron out some of the um, some of those expectations and then talking through the courses, um, particularly, um, as I can speak for myself, I just joined a week ago, so um, particularly um, talking through the ITE courses for new personnel within the um, within the industry um, and just talking about basics of terminology and lesser known courses um, and then the last one was around for next year um, there was a discussion around consistency of how payments are working across providers and potentially becoming less competitive in that space and more collaborative um, and you know in terms of the profession in terms of um, increasing school buy-in and commitment to to us as well so um, there was a question around could the council and the ministry work together in helping us iron that out? Um, yeah, that was us. Kia ora, future group four, just group three, please. Kia ora, Koto. Um, I'm from uh, Victoria University, Te Haringawaka. Um, we had, uh, at this time of year, with our brains, and um, we had to really <laughs> recall what, we, what we'd done in the year. Um, but um, so I went back over diaries and found um, useful information about inclusion, um, placements. We said that all the sharing between IT providers is really useful. Um, the idea of um, the, that all the relationship between associate teachers, mentor teachers, and we also said about consistency um, in the evaluation of the standards across different IT providers. Um, we ended up having quite a big conversation just about the neurodiversion student teachers that we have. Um, and um, just a, a general conversation. And one of the things that I think would be quite interesting with um, is guidance about the informa information flow between ITE providers um, and schools about our students. You know, we've had ATs and MTs saying, um, why didn't you tell us this? And um, you know, we're limited in what we can say, but maybe the need, there could be some clarification about how we can communicate um, more information about perhaps fragile student teachers. I don't, that was a, a thought. Yeah, I think group three, yes, that made sense, Catherine. Group two, please. We didn't actually decide who was speaking, but Medipa, did you want <laughs> to do since you attended most of the sessions? I thought you were going to Jasmine because you you were the note taker, weren't you? <laughs> so, um, generally, this the sessions uh, found them interesting, but it would be good to get some more information about how the new resource um, from an ITE perspective and different ways um, to integrate it into courses. Call fifty fuck a pie that is. Um, wondered if students might um, there might be some confusion out there as we've already got the other resources in play, such as Tapasa, um, Tapasa, and looking at the transitional part in those three areas that were mentioned. So that was one thing um, for next year that could be useful. 
uh, more information to translate into the classroom for the student teachers. Uh, we've got there more transparent processes and communications with providers around initiatives in a timely manner to allow uh, providers an opportunity to respond appropriately, um, kind of in alignment with some of the ideas that have been raised in previous rooms in terms of um, assessment practices, um, expectations, associate teacher support, aligning payments with associate teachers from providers. Um, we find ourselves in a very competitive market um, as a provider. Um, I'm also very keen from a personal perspective to work closely with other providers and try and align some of those processes um, for our student teachers and as providers. Um, the primary curriculum refresh, um, how does that impact on what we are currently providing in terms, in terms of our coursework? And a, just a general feeling um, that there is so much change happening. How do we as providers respond effectively and efficiently with this shifting landscape? So it was just a sense of there was so much change happening in every space. Uh, yeah the duck on the water analogy with the feet underneath the paddling to keep up. Thank you, Jasmine. Group two, yeah, well, I think we totally get where you come from there. And the last group, please, group one. We well, didn't decide either, but I'll just jump in. Kia ora mai Tahiri McRae from Tahiri Nawaka, and thank you to Jill, um, Elena and Carla for our, our kōrero. Uh, so yeah, a lot of alignment with what's already been shared, um, or I shared, uh, that I really liked um, the kōrero around uh, the symposium that the early childhood cohort shared a couple of weeks ago. And then from that, I appreciated what Carla shared and that that's fantastic to give back to our, our communities through symposiums. Um, but it's rather than it being... Um, being informative or sharing um, that we uh, they're action focused and so how can we be supported by the Ministry of Ed and the Teaching Council and some of the recommendations that might come out in different symposia that happen in our in our rohe uh, and uh, we're looking at um, connecting to what the ministry just um, presented before is how uh, do we support each other with 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 the current programs that are working um, for targeted particular groups and um, and they've given an example there. Uh, so how do we? Yeah, again, there's been a theme of collaboration and support, and um, rather than reinventing the wheel in our different rohe, but still keeping um, our uniqueness. Um, as well, which I'm sure we agree with. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Haria and Group One. <clears throat> um, we that was good conversation. We've got a record of those notes. Um, if you feel like there are any uh, topics for 2024 that arise after this quarter or now, just please send a, an email through to Talia, uh, IT admin at the Teaching Council, and she'll add it to the list. Um, there were quite a few references there to um, assessment um, and Libby's going to report in in a, about one minute's time. She might have some thoughts about that. Uh, just quickly, um, going back about 20 minutes, uh, we were talking about uh, staff, uh, prominent staff who are leaving. Naomi um, also mentioned that uh, Dr. Jill Rutherford is retiring from the University of, of, of Otago. So thanks for that, Naomi and Thank you, Jill. She's not here, obviously. I don't think she is getting nice, nice to her that night. So, Livy, um, over to you for a policy update, please. Namihi, Bill. Um, kia ora koutou, ko Libby toku ingoa. Um, I've actually um, uh, been out of the IT space within um, our policy and implementation team for a few months now, but um, am re-engaging. So um, lovely to be back with you all. Um, so I'll give you a quick update on some of the um, activities happening in the policy space, um, but it'll be short and brief this time. And um, But certainly in the new year, we'll be engaging with you. Um, it does mean I 
potentially can't answer any questions directly for you, but um, if you want to post any questions, I'll certainly um, follow up for you. So the first briefing I was going to give was just on the language competence policy. Um, you may be aware that a 2022 amendment to the Education and Training Act actually um, broadened um, the language settings and the purpose of the Teaching Council. So um, while our role is to ensure safe and high quality leadership teaching and learning for children and young people in early childhood primary and secondary school in English medium and Maori medium, that's actually also now been extended to other language settings. So it's a good time to be reviewing our um, language competence policy, and we've been doing some initial work around um, particularly looking at pathways for Pacific um, languages, um, and we anticipate that um, early next year we'll be consulting with you about um, how that impacts on the, the actual policy itself. Um, the second thing I was going to just quickly mention, as Bill alluded to, was um, we undertook uh, a few months ago a consultation around changes to the ITE requirements, particularly part two, relating to monitoring, review and moderation. Um, our Governing Council um, considered the consultation that came back and have approved um, some changes to the policy. Um, we are currently working through those changes um, and we are finalising communications to the um, working group that was set up as a subset of our ITE advisory group. So obviously we'll be um, hoping in the next week or so to update them on the changes to the policy and the next steps. Um, and then once we've done that, we can share that more widely with IT providers so that you can get a sense of um, the changes that have been proposed in that space. I guess um, without going into details now, I just want to reassure you one of the main focuses of the changes is to make as much as possible um, the monitoring requirements as light touch as possible. Um, and so that means that sort of um, we're relying on that high trust model of um, information sharing and review. And it's only if there's particular issues that emerge that um, a more, um, involve, more involvement or engagement may be required. Um, but once again, um, certainly in the new year, we'll be sharing more details with you about that policy change. Uh, and that's all from me in the meantime. Thanks, Bill. Uh, tēnā koe, Libby, nā mihi mō ngā kōrero. Uh, thank you for sharing your updates with our ITE community. We look forward to uh, our future work together um, with all our ITE community here. Tēnā koe e whoa. Uh, uh, ko ana hera tōku ingoa, he kaiwhatu matua i te whare o matatū Aotearoa e mihi kauatu ana ki a tātou. Uh, a few, as we draw the symposium to a close, a few reminders ne. ITE newsletter is being released this week for your viewing. You can't, you can't miss these newsletters. Mm -hmm. um, we miss our meetings and our symposiums that will be coming through ne. Uh, also, Please let us know of the dates that your wānanga or institution will be closed over the Xmas break and when um, it will be your business will be open in the new year. Matatu Aotearoa Teaching Council will be closed from Friday 22nd of December and will reopen Monday 28th of January. We look forward to hearing all the great news that you've had over the Xmas break. Ka tira e tāna, ko ngā tai o mihi e rere tonu ana ki a koutou katoa. Koutou i whai wahi mai ki tēnei hui huinga o tātou i te kōrero rero, i te wānanga, ko eke ki te taumata o te hakaaro, a uh, nō reira, a nei anō mātou o matatū Aotearoa, arā ko te tīma te ohu pairewa e mihi tonu ana ki tēnā ki tēnā o tātou. Mā te atua tātou, e manaki, e tiaki tēnā, 
koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Uh, to all our attendees and uh, invited guests, uh, thank you for choosing to join the symposium with all the kōrero that has been shared through ITE Symposia this year. Uh, on behalf of Matatu Aotearoa and the teacher quality team, Jane Franklin, our manager, Jocelyn Pollock, uh, Simon Cuttle, Talia Davis and Bill Hubbard, myself included, we thank you once, we thank you twice, we thank you thrice. Uh, mm -hmm. Many blessings be uh, bestowed upon us all. Thank you again and best wishes to you all in your um, time of spending with your whānau. Um, kia ora koutou, tēnā tātou. Kia ora tālia. Oh, kia ora anahira. Kia ora. Kua e ki runga, kua e ki raro. E rongo whakairi hia ki runga ki a tēnā. Tēnā. Haumie, huie, tai ki Tai ki Kaki everyone. Merry Kirihimiti.